So as you saw earlier, I woke up and got the day started by letting all the dogs out and feeding them and checking on the puppies. And now it's about 30 minutes later, I have ate breakfast myself and also changed into something besides my pajamas. I'm just in a comfy hoodie and some leggings because I am working from home today. So I have more of a chill day ahead. So I just wanted to come on here and say hello, kind of tell you guys what this video is going to be about. If you guys enjoy it, make sure to give it a thumbs up as well as hit that subscribe button down below. It means the world to me when you guys subscribe to my channel. And thank you guys also so, so much for 20,000 subscribers. I seriously can't even fathom it still to this day, but I'm just so thankful for all of you that support my channel and I'm so excited to see what 2022 has in store for us. But yeah, so today's video is going to be kind of a day in my life like I've done in the past, but instead of just doing a full voiceover this time, I am going to be kind of just doing it vlog style. I really enjoy the voiceover type, but I figured why not switch it up and do it, you know, with me talking over it. But with that, it's going to come a lot more distractions and noises and everything like that, but it's kind of going to also be a little bit more raw and authentic and things. I have just finished letting the dogs out of their select pens from eating. Everyone has ate. Um, some of them left food in their bowl, but I just leave those 
like that for when I put them back in their pens, like if I go to run an errand or something like that. But for the most part, everyone has eight and they're just out playing. I don't know if you can see. There's like three of them down here. Indy's over there. Um, also, side note, Willow, not Willow, Harlow is in heat. So if you see some of that going on in the background, I'm sorry. I'll try to cover it, but that's a lot of my reality right now. So, but yeah, I am just going to basically get my day started. A lot of the times I start off by obviously getting up and first thing comes first, the dogs. So I get up, let everyone out, feed everyone, and then I go and take care of myself, which is what I just got finished doing. And now I am going to be getting my work day started. So normally around this time, I will probably go in and check on the puppies one more time during the day. Puppy wise, I don't really do much at this age. So they are just around one week old. They're like one week and two days, I believe. Three days, something like that. Um, they were born on Saturday, today's Tuesday. And a lot of times, like right now, they just eat and sleep. So I will go on throughout the day and check on them and just double check, count, make sure no one's missing, everyone's breathing. And then a lot of times during the evening is kind of when our main routine happens. I do have a goal to mop today as well though, so that will be in this video. A lot of being a breeder and just a dog owner in general is cleaning. I don't think everyone really understands how much cleaning goes into being a dog breeder, how much dirt dogs bring in. So that is on my to-do list today as well. But yeah, I'm gonna stop talking and show you guys the puppies real quick and then I'm going to get my work day started. All right guys, so here is everyone. They are not being PG. So Indy's over here enjoying a Benny Bone. I got them, oh my goodness. Like I said, real life y'all. This is them playing, being crazy. Indy's enjoying one of her Benny Bones I got from the Benny Bone multi-packs that they had to sell on Chewy. Can you not? <laughs> Ivy's not a fan. Ivy, don't you bark? Oh, hi, pretty girl. Oh, goodness. Okay, okay, okay. So they're being crazy. There's sweet Ellie. She was chewing on another Benny Bone. They have not, we use this to cover the couch because it's leather and it like scratches really bad. Can't even hear me probably because of them. Hey, hey, uh-uh, chill. But also, you're probably gonna see this in today's video a lot, so I'll go ahead and like make a comment on it so people aren't confused. These are towels that my husband rigged with these little hangers. And basically we, y'all probably saw in my previous video, we like lined that with the black sheet and then lined this with like cardboard and stuff so that like the other dogs couldn't see in and they didn't, weren't bothering Indy. Well, they still obviously could see in if they like got on their back legs and sit, stood up. Harla, leave her alone. And so they were doing that and Indy wasn't liking that. They would also somehow figure out how to get back Harlow, no ma'am, into this little crevice back here. And they would stand like right there and look into the weapon box while Indy was nursing and she did not like, like that at all. So my husband rigged this little towel set up to block basically and give Indy more privacy. I know it's kind of ghetto, but it works for now and it was cheap. So, this is the best we've got right now. <laughs> but we have them on little hangers like this. It's so funny. And I just slide it over and pop it there. And then it kind of covers these creases and stuff like that. So when Indy is in here nursing her babies, like she can't really see anyone and no one's really bothering her. Even though right now she's not really bothered. She's very invested in her Benny Bone right now. So I'm going to go in here and show you guys. The poodles are obsessed with the puppies. But Indy is not obsessed with them getting in here, so we're gonna always make sure to shut this behind us. Okay. So in Indy's little area, like you can probably see the dirt right there. I've got to mop today. We've got her food, her breakfast. She didn't really finish it, but she probably will later. Um, her water, and then we've got the puppy's little whelping area. So I have this vet fleece on here. It gives the puppies, well, it's actually like a knockoff of vet fleece. Gives the puppies a lot of traction to toddle around and walk on and also help when they're nursing. Just kind of helps prevent like hip problems and stuff like that at a young age because this right here is a little bit slicker. So they get this so they can have a better grip. Got our pig rails. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six, no, one, two, three, four, five, six. You got six puppies right there. And then you got two little munchkins right here. So like I said, they are at the age right now where they do a majority of sleeping. Number one, sleep. 
eat and potty. Um, Indy still stimulates them to use the bathroom at this age and cleans up after them. And then they sleep and when they're not sleeping, they're eating. And then throughout the day while I am like in the house working, obviously, um, it would be nice if I could just leave this door open and Indy could kind of come in the house and come in here as she pleases. But she's still really protective over them and doesn't like the other dogs getting to them. So in order to like keep them out, I will normally just leave Indy in here by herself with this door open and she's got full like roam of the room, all the toys she could want to play with. And I will take the other dogs with me inside while I, not that this isn't inside, but into the house while I get work done and they'll like play or take a nap. Um, that way Indy can kind of come in here and freely nurse when she prefers, but also get out of here and take a break. And you can hear everyone playing back there. But yeah, I will just do that just so Indy has the freedom to kind of come and go as she pleases if she's not stuck in here all day. And still give her like the ability to get out, lay on the couch, play with toys and things like that. Real quick before I get my work day started, I wanted to come in here and show you guys that some of their eyes are opening. So this is Palmer. I don't know if she'll show us because she's sleeping. But her little eyes, can you show us? Her little eyes are open and see. Hi. Her little eyes are opening. This is Miss Aspen. Her eyes are opening. They're probably gonna be mad I woke them up. Can you show us your eyes? See, her little eyes are opening. Hello. I think there's a few others. Are your eyes opening? Who are you? Oh, Stowe. I don't think his eyes are open just yet. Yeah. He is so chunky. Look at this fat baby. Look at that fat baby. And like his collar, man, is so like hidden because he's got so much chunk. That is him. Look at these sweet baby. So yeah, we got a few of them opening their eyes. They're getting big. They're just eating, sleeping, pooping, and peeing. And then we change out these two things every single night. So you'll see me do that tonight. But um, in the mornings, we don't. Seriously, this right here is what I'm talking about. Even though Matthew made all that to block, no ma'am. She still finds a way because she's obsessed with them. So I am going to go get Ivy back out where she's supposed to be and then I am going to go get my work day started and then we'll check on these little guys again um, sometime in a little bit. All right guys, I've been working for quite some time now as you can see and I thought it was time to check the cameras and check on everyone. Indy is out there, but she's clearly obviously not nursing right now. But I did this throughout the day, multiple times a day. I just hop on the Wubby Box cam and check the puppies. I do a little puppy count. I don't know if you can tell, but there are eight puppies there. And I just kind of do this to check in on everyone, make sure everything is going smoothly and that everyone is safe. You know, nothing bad has happened. And it just gives me peace of mind to be able to check this throughout the day as I work. All right, guys, it's a little later and I just checked the cameras again. And as you can see, Indy is now laying in there nursing. So I am lucky I don't have to tell her to go nurse or force her to nurse her baby. She just enjoys it and loves being a mom. So as you can tell, she just went in there voluntarily and is just nursing them babies. All right, guys, it is now lunchtime. I have been sitting at my desk for the past few hours getting work done. The dogs are running around behind me. Well, Ivy is right there. Willow, Harlow, and Jagger. I run around being crazy and we're gonna avoid that. Hello. This is what happens when you get a female in heat and you have multiple dogs in the house. But anyway, good lord. It is lunchtime, so I am going to get up, go in there, check on the puppies, check on Indy, check on mom, and I am going to crate everyone or put everyone in their like pens. So normally during lunchtime, it's my time to kind of take a break and relax when I've been here with them all day and they've been playing and running around the house. So I like to just put them up so they can finish whatever they didn't eat at breakfast time and also kind of take basically like an afternoon nap. Um, and then I'll come back and work a little bit more before I let them out again. Um, it's just a good time for me to kind of get a break. I know a lot of people don't think like crating their dog is good or if you're at home, why should you crate your dog? But I'm a big advocate for crating your dog throughout the day, even if you're home, it really is really good for them and also good for you to be productive and get things done and not have to worry about watching them continuously. And I promise you, nine times out of 10, your dog really enjoys their crate if you've trained them to it properly. So I'm going to go into the dog room, 
check on Indy and the babies and then put everyone else up and eat my lunch and then I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. She's waiting. Hi. How are you? How are you? You can go see your babies? You can go see. <gasps> oh goodness. Oh, roly toly. Hi little babies. Oh. Yeah, hi mama. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hi, sweet girl. Hi, you cutie. Oh, look at this boy. Is your belly scratched? Oh, look at that leg. Oh my goodness, they're just so cute. What are you dreaming? I almost passed out. Okay, you gonna go outside, Mama? Let's go outside. Going back to see the babies. So normally, guys, when I come in here and check on everyone, Sometimes the box will get like kind of messed up and reconfigured while Indy's laying in it like that just doesn't look normal This thing will get kind of rolled up. So I just kind of like to straighten everything out as best as I can And then also some cuddles never killed nobody Huh? Oh, hello Hi Camden, can we see you? Look at that sweet face Oh, they're so cute. So right now everyone's snoozing, so chances are mom has fed them recently. So they're all snoozing. I got Miss Aspen over here. I think over there, that's Vale. There's Jackson. Who am I missing? That's McCall. That's little McCall. Oh, look at this. So... Let mama out, babies are sleeping, and I am going to go eat my lunch. All right guys, I just finished eating my lunch. I had some pizza, and I'm watching a little bit of YouTube now, and I just thought I would check my cameras to see what everyone is up to. As you can see, I don't know if it's gonna focus, but Willow and Ivy are sleeping. Jagger is sleeping. Harlow is sleeping. You can't see Ellie, I'm assuming she's sleeping. So that is on my Furbo, and then on this one, this is the whelping box uh, camera that I use. There we go, it had logged me out, but here are the babies. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I constantly like count just to make sure no one's missing or that something's not happened. So I'm just checking on them real quick before I go back to work. As you can tell, like I said earlier though, everyone is taking a nap. Like midday naps are so important for not only for me to get things done, but really important to also help keep them on a schedule and all those sorts of things. So everyone is taking their nap. All right, guys, I'm still sitting here where I ate lunch and I have just started replying to a bunch of emails. I have a lot of emails that I have to get back to and I also need to send out our puppy family's one week email. It's been two days since they turned one week and I have not reached back out. I'm really bad about getting back to emails sometimes just because with my full-time job I get super busy and emails is like the last thing on my list that I think to do. But right now I'm getting back to emails for people that are applied like for puppies and puppy applications and stuff. I'm trying to schedule times to do phone interviews with all of them and then I think I am going to try to type up our one week puppy email before I let the dogs all out, check on the puppies again, and get back to work for the day. But I thought I would just update you guys on what I have been doing. Probably do a little time lapse of me responding to emails because emails is a big part of being a breeder that a lot of people don't understand. Cleaning and emails, let me tell you. People think it's just playing with puppies all day, and although that's a big part of it and a fun part of it, that's definitely not all of it. Um, so. I'm going to do some emails and figured I'd just do a fun little time lapse for you guys and y'all could watch me reply to emails because like I said, there's a lot of them. Alright guys.
guys, I moved locations back at my desk, but I just finished typing out this one week update email to go out to our family. So I am sending the very last one. Okay, so now that I have sent that, I am done and I'm about to go. That took me a lot longer than I thought it was gonna take and I've kind of got a headache now from looking at the screen for so long. But now that that's done, I'm going to, I think, go outside and let the dogs out and let them out to use the bathroom and check on Indy's babies. It's 150, 150. Let's look and see the cameras, see what the puppies are doing real quick. But like I said, I'm gonna go check on Indy and the babies and let the dogs out now and then probably get back to work. And then after that, um, we'll start our basically night time routine of this video. Why are you like that? Hey everyone. What's up? Hey Arno. Go potty. Give me just a second. Come on. Go potty. We do three at a time when we let out pups to potty. Hi. Those two are obsessed with the puppies. She always stretches. Let's go check on babies. No, ma'am. No. And they're still doing the same thing they were doing earlier, like you guys saw, which is sleeping. This is literally all they do during the day. Most of our activity happens during the evening time. Everyone's just sleeping and cuddling up together. So. I'll catch up with you guys probably once we start like their night routine. All right guys, I just finished letting all the dogs out. Ignore the wet spot on my chest. I had to get some mud off because someone Andy, decided she was going to jump on me and get some mud on my chest. But now I am going to fold some laundry. So I do laundry every single day <laughs> with puppies because they go through a lot of laundry. A lot of whelping pads also we go through a lot of like just raggedy towels washing puppies or not puppies washing or not even washing but um wiping the dog's paws off as they come in and out of the house because right now it's winter here and our backyard is nothing but like dead grass and mud and it's been raining actually a lot here as well so we have a lot of just dirt and mud in our backyard it's not really grass anymore so that means that they come in with muddy, muddy feet. So I'm doing laundry all day, every day. Um, and that's a big part of breeding that I don't think people realize either. Not only is it a lot of cleaning and picking up poop and diarrhea and throw up and just everything in between with dogs, like it's never a dog in here. It also is a lot of laundry. Because I see so many people in my videos like say, oh my God, you inspired me to be a breeder. Like, oh my God, I want to breed so bad. And while I do think, I do love breeding and think it's great. I don't think it's for everyone. I don't think it's easy. I don't think it's some dream life that people make it out to be. So I'm trying to do this to make it seem, I guess just to kind of show you guys the reality that yes, although like raising puppies and bringing heart healers into this world is amazing and I love doing what I do. It's not for everyone. It's not easy. It's also not cheap whatsoever. Like I need to just sit down and show you guys like in a month what I spend on like taking care of the dogs and the puppies in general and just it would blow your minds. So although like I find it like I am trying to show people that one that breeders can do things the right way and be good and all that stuff and that breeding isn't bad. I also don't want to glamorize this lifestyle and make it out to be like everyone should breed or that it's a simple way to get rich or get rich fast because if that was the case, um, 
everyone would be doing it and everyone would continue to do it. There's a lot of breeders I see, or not even breeders, I wouldn't even call them that, but a lot of people I see like breed their dogs and they're like, oh, I'm gonna breed my dog and make some extra money. And in the end, you end up like probably not even breaking even half the time, especially if you're doing it right. If you're being a backyard puppy mill and not doing any health testing or a lot of vet, you know, checkups, things like that, maybe you are getting away with some money. But if you're doing it the right way, chances are you're not, especially when you first start out. And I just turned off the light because it was really orange and yellow and it looks a lot better now. So sorry I didn't have that the whole time. But I guess basically what I'm trying to say as I sit here and fold laundry for the 1800th time is that although breeding can be a good thing, you can do it the right way. You can be an ethical breeder. Those do exist that it's not for everyone. I'm not trying to sit here and glamorize this lifestyle and make everyone think that they can make it as a breeder because it's not easy, it's not cheap, it's not a quick way to get rich, and it's a lot harder than I feel like a lot of people realize, and a lot of a lot harder than I think I make it out to be even so, because obviously, you don't wanna show all the bad things that come along with everything you know, in your life, because bad things are hard, and although like obviously we haven't been struck with too much tragedy as a breeders, like finances are hard, time is hard. Like if you think, if you like doing stuff and going places, yeah, don't be a breeder. Don't have a dog because that is like nearly impossible when I have puppies. Like this past year was the first year I didn't go on vacation in my entire life. I've been going to the beach every single year with my family since I was born. And for the first time this year, I did not do that. And it was very hard because everyone went and me and Matt didn't get to go because we had puppies this summer. And it's just stuff like that that really kind of sucks sometimes being a breeder. But you have to be able to sacrifice, you have to be able to give up going out with your friends, doing things with friends. Oh, I can't, I've got puppies, sorry. So, although I really enjoy sharing this life with you guys, I really enjoy seeing your guys' comments that inspired you and you want to breed one day. I just want to also keep it real and let you guys know that this is not an easy lifestyle. Having six dogs is freaking hard. Like, I get so worked up sometimes when I see, oh my god, this is a dream life. Like. Yes, guys, I get having six dogs seems like so amazing and it seems so glamorous. But let me tell you, there are some days where I literally like want to just open up the backyard and say, go. <laughs> Obviously, I never would. I love these dogs more than anything. My dogs are treated better than most people's children. I mean, I have six dogs together, the groomer, every six weeks. Like, they're fed a high quality diet. Like, trust me, my dogs are very well taken care of. But there are some days that I'm like, I wish I didn't have a single dog because this is so hard. Like, I'll be coming home from eight hours at work to come home to a dog that has diarrhea and you have to spend three hours, you know, cleaning the crate, cleaning them, like doing all this stuff. And when you're just so drained, it's exhausting. It's mentally exhausting. It's mentally draining. It's physically exhausting and draining. It's just, it's not all that it's worked up to be. And I don't want to ever fool you guys and make you guys think that this lifestyle is easy. Um, it's definitely worth it and I wouldn't trade it for the world and I love what I do, but nothing worth having was ever easy and I just want to make sure that you guys know that I'm not trying to glamorize anything, that this is not for everyone, it's not easy, it's not cheap, it's not a dream at all times, don't get me wrong, I love all the dogs and in the end it is a dream to have all these dogs, but it is so super hard sometimes and there are some days I just truly want to give up, so that was just my little spill that I kind of wanted to say on here because I just feel like I get those comments a lot of times. And although I do appreciate them, they really do kind of upset me because I don't think some of you guys really realize how much, like, how hard it is to own six dogs, let alone breed dogs, and how financially draining it is, how mentally and physically draining it is, and it's just not as fabulous as you guys might think it is, and that I sometimes make it out to be. So I'm trying to be a little bit more authentic and realistic here on my channel as well. I guess that's basically what I'm trying to say, because I want y'all to know that... You know, see every parts of this and not just the good, cuddling, sweet little puppy side. That it's really easy to show because that's a great part of it, but it's not, it's definitely not all of it. Like I said though, don't get it twisted. I love what I do and I wouldn't do it if I didn't love it, but it's not always the easiest. And it's very lonely at times too. Very lonely. Not to mention the hate you get no matter how hard you try to justify yourself or prove yourself alone not even justify you prove yourself there's always going to be someone that hates you there's always going to be someone that leaves a nasty comment on a video especially and it's always the idiots that literally have no idea what they're talking about like these people that comment all this like 
veterinarian recommendations or like comments on my video and I'm like okay if you don't have a degree in veterinary reproductive specialty don't comment on my video because you sound like an idiot and I like your point is so invalid so that's just a rant I just wanted to rant for a second while I folded my laundry so now my laundry is folded I'm about to start a whole nother load and get to work and then I think I said earlier we were going to start the night routine now probably the next clip that you see is me starting the evening routine or maybe it's not because I still have to mop and I need to do that before tonight like the evening starts so I don't know when you'll see me again but you're gonna see me again soon so all right guys it's a little bit later and it is now time for me to vacuum and mop the dog room I've got Indy here with me she's chilling in here since her pups are in here she just finished nursing them and I'm going to start by vacuuming followed by mopping this is kind of like a more rough clean because I'm not moving everything out of the garage sometimes I'll do like deep cleans where I move everything out and vacuum them up but today I'm just gonna I mean I'll move the couch and stuff like that in the crates but like these things are not moving I'm just doing what you can see so I'm about to get started on that it's four so I'm hoping by like 4 30 4 45 I can be done with this but We'll see, so stay tuned. later I finished that chore so still drying but I have now vacuumed and mopped looks so super nice I'm so glad I've gotten that out of the way it's like my least favorite chore just because it takes so long but I vacuum and mop well I vacuum every single day I vacuum and mop twice a week so and then I like clean the puppies like welcome box um, every single night um, so you'll see me do that later tonight. It's like the very last thing I do um, with the puppies during the day. So later tonight I will go and well, one will feed all the dogs. And then we will do ENS and ESI with the puppies. And then lastly we will change their bedding and wipe down their whelping area for the night. So that's kind of like the gist of it. But So this is my last like main chore for the day. I do need to go fold some more laundry. Then we'll feed the dogs to ENS, ESI, clean their area. I forgot one thing. Bathe Mama Indy. She's got to have her butt bath and all that stuff. Mass status check, whatever. And then we'll be done. So we're not out of the woods yet because things get a little bit more hectic at night. So it's a very exhausting lifestyle. <laughs> it's very tiring, but we're almost there. All right, guys. It is 5.30 now. I've got all the dog bowls, and I'm about to start getting the dogs at dinner together. So if you're new here, and do not know we feed Purina Pro Plan. So the adults that are not nursing or pregnant get just the adult food and it is just the beef and rice, I believe. So that's kind of what it looks like. And then if you're like Indy and nursing or when she was pregnant, we also get puppy food and then uh Ellie gets puppy food as well, and it's the large breed beef and rice as well. So, I am going to fill these up real quick. I'll set you guys up and do a little time lapse of that, and then I'll show you guys everything I put in their kibble tonight. All right, I'm being pretty risky. Try to vlog and carry all six bowls. I'm going to turn this off and meet you guys in the kitchen. Alright guys, first thing I'm going to do is heat up my liquid. So every night, you're not going to be able to see me, but every night I rehydrate their kibble. Depends, some nights I just use water, some nights I use goat's milk, some nights I use a mix. Some nights I use bone broth, and that's what we're using tonight. Just adds in some extra 
good old calories. So I'm going to open this fully up. Ugh. I'm going to add it to this. And I'm going to put water and fill up the rest of this. And then I'm going to put this in the microwave for two minutes to heat it up. Once that heats up, certain dogs get eggs, certain dogs don't. So we only have four eggs. So tonight um, I'm going to have to split one egg between both Poodle Girls and then Harlow, Jagger, and Indy will get an egg. And Ellie still doesn't get eggs or anything. So. to add in a little bit of the primal goat's milk just onto everyone's just to give them a little bit of those calories our bowl milk is finished so it's nice and hot and so we're going to rehydrate the kibble okay and then lastly we're going to add some salmon oil to everyone's this is literally almost empty so don't know if we're going to even, eh, we'll have enough for everyone. Lastly, I'm going to top off Indy's food with some cottage cheese for some extra calcium while she is nursing. Alright, so then I just stir everybody's food up. So this is what everybody's food is looking like. And then once we go back into the dog, I'm gonna carry all them in and then we'll add Indy's supplements. All right guys, so I'm in the dog room and I'm going to add Indy's supplements to her food. So first thing I give her is I give her an Oxymama vitamin. Next, I add this sunflower stuff. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it because I don't know, but this helps prevent mastitis. All my dogs are freaking out because they're hungry. They have a little bit of digestive issues and stuff like that after birth and just eating all the puppy's poop and stuff. It just kind of upsets their stomach. So I'm gonna have to give her two. And then I recently changed Ellie's food and she's doing okay with it, but still having a little bit of issue even though we changed her over slowly. So I'm just gonna give her one. So this is Indy's food, all the supplements and everybody else's. So now we're gonna feed everyone. So first we'll do Ellie. Ellie, come on, let's go, great. Everyone knows to go to their areas. There you go, to be fed. Come on, Indy. Here. Kick it to babies. <laughs> Floor is so nice and clean. There you go, Willow. Ivy, right, stop eating out of your sisters. There's yours. And then for these two, they eat just out in the open. All right. So now that everyone is fed and they're eating their dinner. I am going to go and cook our dinner while they eat and then they'll nap, take a little later afternoon nap and then once we're done eating, I come let them out and they're like free the rest of the night. So I'll catch with you guys in a little bit. All right guys, it is now after dinner. I have ate and I am full and I have let all the dogs out to use the bathroom since 
they ate dinner and took their little afternoon nap and now they're in the house just playing i'm about to start my night routine with the puppies this is kind of like the very last thing that i do of the day mainly with the dogs besides to let the big dogs out one more time so i have this little tubware right here and i'm going to go grab all the puppies and put them in this and then bring them over here for their ens and esi so let's go grab them Got a basket of puppies. All right, guys, so I have everyone here, this little tote, and then got our scale over here. Let me move the dog's water. Then here's the notebook. So I'm going to grab it. This is the binder that has all their info in it. Well, one of the pups got a little poop on Aspen's paper. And then this is my ice pack for ENS ESI. And then we need to find today. So today is day 10. I think it's this very last one right here. So today is star anise. No idea if I even said that right or what that is. And then I also need our little thingy, this thing. So they're all gonna chill in there and each puppy I'm not gonna show y'all aspens because it's got the little poop on it, but each puppy has their own neonatal care chart. So it says their ribbon color, their name, their sex, mom, dad, their golden doodle, all this information on their birth. And then we track their daily weights here, ENS, and then ESI here. So these are all from the, or this template is from the Badass Breeder Guide. I will leave that link down below if you're a breeder and wanna check out this little, um, these charts. And then I also have the calendar. Okay, so this is week one, so we're on week two right here. So this is the calendar. Kind of shows you like what all we have to do each day. And I'll check that off as we go. But yeah, so I am going to do ENS and ESI with all the puppies. I'll probably do a few in regular motion and then fast forward through all of them because this takes quite a bit of time, but we're gonna go ahead and get started on all of this. First up is little Aspen. Look at her eyes. Here is Belle. She is so pretty. Look at her. Her eyes are opening. Next is Stowe. Look at him. He's smelling for mom. They're all pretty hungry for dinner, huh? He's got the prettiest wife. I thought he was gonna yawn for you guys. <laughs> this is my little sweet red collar McCall. I think she's just so cute. Look at her eyes. Her eyes are so open. I think I like her so much because she's the lightest, so she reminds me the most of her mom. But look. Next we have Breck. Her eyes haven't quite opened up just yet. She's so chunky too. She's probably our chunkiest girl. That eye's trying to peek through. Sweet baby. Next is our sweet Palmer girl. Her eyes are open. She's just not wanting to open them. Palmer, wakey wakey. Can you wake up? Hi. No. our other little boy Jackson it's the green collar he's a little bit lighter than Stowe but they're pretty similar and he doesn't have as much white but he still has some so here's Mr. Jackson he is so chunky 
Oh, qué bello. Lastly, we have little Camden. Can you show them yourself, Camden? She's so cute. Her eyes are open yet, either. She was our last one, so we're now all done with ANSCS. Huh. Good job, Camden. Good job, little girl. All right, guys, I've got all my mats that I use in this corner. Babies are out there in their basket, and I'm going to pull this up, put all this stuff out, lay down the new stuff, wipe all that down, and put the babies back, and then they'll be ready to go for the night. I've put all the clean and new wallpaper pads in. That one looks sturdy, but it's not. I just got it out of the dryer. And now it's time to put all those little munchkins back in here. the bedding have the old dirty bedding just went and shook it out outside mama indy is in there nursing so i'm going to put this in my laundry basket for me to start the load first thing in the morning and then i think i'm going to go inside matt got home as you saw while i was doing ens esi i think i'm going to go inside and we're going to watch an episode of yellowstone and then to close out the night i'm going to do indy's butt bath and take her temperature so we're almost done with today but not quite yet Take her temperature, make sure she doesn't have a temperature. Anything over 103 is concerning. And then we'll put her up as well as the other dogs and we'll be done and I'll be able to end this vlog. All right guys, that was Indy's temp, which comes out to about 101.8, which is a good temp. So I'm gonna grab my pen and just, so that's this today. So 10.8. Eight. I've checked for mastitis, done her damn washing care, done puppy weights, and done ENS and ESI. So we are done for today. Come on. 
All right guys, as you just saw, we just finished putting all the dogs up to bed and I'm about to leave the dog room and turn the lights off. And look, the girls are already getting on their bed. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this dog mom style vlog, day in the life of a golden doodle breeder kind of thing. Um, I know it was kind of all over the place and probably it's really long. Obviously I haven't edited yet, but I'm sure this is gonna be a longer video because vlog style just tends to be a little bit more authentic and also longer because I include a lot more and talk about things a lot more. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me comment down below if you like the voiceover type day in the lives or if you like these more vlog style, like me actually talking throughout the vlog or the video um, types better so I know which ones to make in the future. But if you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up as well as hit that subscribe button down below. It means the world to me when you guys subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.